Yes, you have all the theory clear. You know all the properties from Docker file and Docker compose. But how can I see this working? Today, we're going to create these files and run it, creating our container using bot. Here we go. Hey teammates, it's me Andre again. So let's see this practical case I prepared to show you guys how we can convert a Docker file into a Docker Compose. Here we have a simple application of Node.js for creating some items. You can find this application and the example of the files with the GitHub link I will leave in the description box. First, I want to show you guys how we can run it using just a Docker file. The first step is create a simple file uh, as a text document and we will rename with the docker file name without any extension. I will open the file with my Visual Studio code and we'll create the steps here. The first step is the image name, node and the tag 10 alpine. We're gonna change the location we brought this to the folder app and then we're going to copy all the files we have on the root directory. If you have the files into a different directory, you must put the full location here. Then we need to run the command yarn install to download all the dependencies from this project. And finally, we must define the command node index.js to execute our application when we launch the container. So now from the root location, we're going to execute the command docker build. So I will open any command shell. In this case, I will use PowerShell. We add the dash D when we want to tag an image. And in this case, I wanted to create the image name, my image and the tag latest. And at the end, we specify the location of the docker file. We see that the image is being created and all the layers are being downloaded. And at the end, we will validate with Docker image ls if our image is created. And yes, it is. We can find it into our Docker desktop to here in the images, in the dashboard. Now we can create a container with our image using the command docker run dash dp, the ports 8080 and the name from my image and the tag I created. And you will see that with this command, we can find our container here. We can use docker ps to validate if our container is here, or we can see it into the docker desktop dashboard too. Here we can see our container with this random name. You can just open the browser here and then we can find our application working. We can add some items and it's working well. That's fine. But what happens if need to convert this Docker file into a Docker Compose? The first step we will do is create another text document too. In this case, I will put the name Docker Compose in lowercase. And the extension will be GML. And I will open this file into my Visual Studio Code 2 to validate the differences between the files. Let's begin to write our Docker Compose. So the first step will be the version of the Docker Compose we will use. Then the root services to begin to add the services we need to add here. Then we need to add our service name. In this case, I will put my app, the image name, which is my image with the tag latest. And I will add the container name too. It's very important because probably we will need to validate the logs in the future. And if I don't have any image, I could add build and the location from my docker file but in this case i will use the image existed image and i will add the host name and the property init true which means that our container will be initialized once created 
And finally, I will add the information of the ports. I will use the same that I added in the last example, 8080, and expose 8080. Remember that the property port is for ports used inside the container and the expose is for the external. We finished the steps for our Docker Compose file, but I realized that we have only one error. The indentation of this here. You must validate this kind of errors because the YAML file will be validated and if you have some syntax error, it will fail. So in this case, I will save and I will open my command shell again to create our container with this command. In this case, we will use docker compose app d and the name of the services, in this case, my app. Before we create this new container, I will delete my existed container because I want to validate if it's working well. I will run this command and, and this is my new container created. I will validate with the docker ps command again. And here is, and we will find it into our app in my image count, which is the name we defined it into the Docker Compose. And we will open the browser to validate our application again. Yes, it's working well. Yeah, it's working so well. But in this case, we're gonna realize that if we stop our container and delete it this information we will lose because we are not sharing our volume for persistence of data into our host or into our computer so in this case i will show you guys how we can create a volume into our docker compose to solve this problem in future so we are again in the docker compose file and I will show you guys how we can create the volumes. I have two ways, the short and the long. First, I will show you how is the short way. We have to put the property volumes. And then we need to add two locations. The location of the folder from my computer and the location from the folder from the container I want to persist in my computer. For this case, because we are using a Node.js application, the persistence of the data is on these folders, etc and todos. But if you want to use the long way, which is good, because I think it's very organized, first you need to put the property bind into the volumes because it's inside the volumes too. Then the source, which is the folder from your computer. It's very important the indentation too. Then the target, which is the location from your container. And finally, we need to add the property read only because you must to define if you need to update information on that location or not. In this case, we're going to put this property in false because we need to proceed the data. And in this way, I'm going to um, delete again this container because I want to try again to proceed the data. And I'm going to um, reload the Docker Compose with the docker compose app comment. You will realize that docker will ask you if you want to share this location with docker. This is the container created with this command. And we enter to this. We're gonna create new items here. And if we enter to the location my persistence, which is the location we shared, we will realize that we have this file inside to do db, which is the file that had the information of the items. And if we stop or delete this container, this information is not removed. 
So in the future, if you want to recreate a container, you will realize that the information will not be empty. In this case, it has the information that we saved in the last example. So we have two items and we can add more and we are sure that this information will not lose in future. So that's why volumes are very important for Docker. So that's all for this video. Thank you guys for watching my video. I will add the instruction for this project on the description box. Subscribe to my channel. This is a kind of learning love for me. So we can learn together here. Goodbye.